rock star in this life Gonna live it up on the attack Baby, I'm bad I just wanna get caught up in this life I'm crazy, I'm mad Do it, no cap Only got one so you better go live it up Cash in the bag Stadium pack Baby, I'm bad Baby, I'm bad you guys it's your girl cc aka cecilia robinson aka cc and i want to thank you guys for tuning in with me today before we get started i need you guys to like subscribe share and i need you guys to hit that bell so you can know when i'm coming on please 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 you guys please 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 i need you guys to share this video um, to my new subscribers, I want to thank you guys so much for choosing me. To my old subscribers, I want to thank you guys for sticking around. All uh, my videos are done in chronological order, so you can always go back and check them out and bring yourself up to speed. For those of you who don't know, I got told on, indicted, and convicted of a bunch of felonies. You know, some of my leading charges was corrupt organization and conspiracy. And right now, I'm talking about being at the ACJ, my final state. Well, not my final state, but one of my final states. My last video, I was talking talking about Big Emma and everybody want to know what happened between me and Big Emma. Well, nothing happened between me and Big Emma because me and Big Emma was both transferred off that pod the very next day. She went on to go to E-Pod, which is a worker's pod and a, a worker's pod and a program pod. And I went off to go to be the D-Pod. You know, I went on d -Pod, and you know, when they told me I packed up all my stuff, I went over to d -Pod, hollered at the CO and they told me what cell I was going in. Now, here's the thing. When you go into a cell with somebody who don't have a celly, sometimes it's tension, you know? Well, that was the case when I walked into this cell. They put me in the cell with a little bitty dyke, you know? And I'm just calling it as I see it, not bashing nobody or whatever. I'm a bisexual female. They put me in the cell with a little bitty dyke, the itty bitty dyke. You know, so when she, when I walk up in the cell, she got a shirt up, scratching the stomach, pants sagging, you know, nappy hair and all this other good stuff. But one of the things I noticed about the itty bitty dyke was she had on a blue thong. Now, I don't know what community she come from, but the ones I know, they wear boxes, they don't wear thongs. So now I'm just feeling like you just up in here and you gay for the stay. You know, you pretending and some shit. So she tell me, she like, yeah, you my Sully. But it's how she talking to me. It's like, bitch, you don't got to put on a tough row. Like I told y'all before. Um, First of all, they try to put, um, they try to put uh, masculine studs and cells together. I'm a fucking girl. I'm not a masculine stud. I just was bald head as fuck because my hair fell out because of the lice treatment. And you can't tell nobody that shit up in there because nobody's going to believe you. You know? So, oh, once again, oh, girl's aggressive. Yeah, I got the bottom bunk. Bitch, I see you got the bottom bunk. Clearly, you got the bottom bunk. Your shit is on the bottom bunk. You know, another thing that I noticed when I walked up in the cell, it smelled like ass. You know, it smelled like ass and that you I could about I could bet a hundred dollars to a bucket of shit that it was the fucking thong she had on. You know, so I put my shit up on the bed and I was like, okay, I already felt the energy. I already I know me. I'm five nine and a half, and at that point in time I was three hundred pounds. This bitch was about four eight, four nine, maybe ninety to ninety-five pounds. I would have fucked her up, up in there. You know, if shit would have went left. Because I, I, once again, I felt the energy. So I go out into the common room and I go sit myself down by the television. Normally when people see, sit by the TV, they just want to watch TV. They don't feel like being bothered. They don't feel like being a part of what's going on in the common room. So a chick come up and sit next to me and she started talking to me about my tattoos. Quite often, um, what I was realizing that my tattoos was conversation conversation pieces for people you know so it's like a little icebreaker me and her sitting there we talking so while we talking i get comfortable enough to ask her why the fuck did my celly have a celly you know before i got there so she started laughing so when she started laughing it already it confirmed what i already knew this bitch was nasty you know what i'm saying if you want to sell by yourself your cell should not smell like that cells are very small spaces you know and the least you can do is keep that bitch fresh Looking at her, she looked dirty. The way she wore her uniform, she looked like trash. Just, just a dirty ass little girl, right? 
So then I'm, you know, I'm just having a regular conversation. She up there, she whispering, well, not so much whispering, but low talking, telling me who was who on the pod and, you know, telling me little, little side jokes and shit about people. Now, it was one person that I noticed. It was this little small chick, dark skin, maybe late 40s, early 50s. And I thought she was beautiful as fuck. You know, had her hair on a little feather. You could tell she was kind of sassy and shit. I just thought she was dope because she was different from anything that I had seen since I had been locked up. And me, I'm, I love dark skin. You know, I'm a, I'm one of those type of uh, people. I love dark skin, especially smooth dark skin. And she had a nice little, uh, I'm going to say she had a nice little swag to her. The way she walked, she had a little sway to her and shit like that. I mean, real dapper. Now, I'm thinking to myself, okay, I really don't want to be in a cell with um, my celly, but I'm going to have to stick this shit out, you know? So, but look, check this out. Don't call me a creep, but I kept watching old girl. Even when it was time for us to lock in, I looked and seen which, which cell she was going into. She was right next door to me. So, okay, keep that in mind. Now, I go in the cell that night, you know, after they do counting shit, I'm going to get myself ready for bed. Now, man, you just been a long, long day. We have been out in the pile. I walked in the little wreck area and all type of shit. You know, I'm going to wash up before I go to bed. So, I'm, I done got used to taking off my clothes in front of people. You know, I take off my clothes, I take off my panties and everything, wash my panties out in the sink, you know, hang them up, you know, hit the little hot spots and shit. This this gonna get me good until the morning, so I get in the shower. Now, another fucking thing I noticed is the little itty bitty dyke, she done laid in the fucking bed. Bitch got on her socks. Now, you had your regular shoes and your regular socks. They gave you stay socks, but you still could have had your socks up in there. She got on these dirty, dusty-ass, crusty-ass socks. Um, Got them little dirty, dingy, rusty-ass, crusty-ass Reebok classics sitting by her bed. And the bitch got on thongs. She still got on them clothes, and she still got them thongs on. Now, I don't know about any other female, but I don't want shit stuck up in my ass all day. You know, and I know the shit stink because you done went to the bathroom three or four fucking times. I know it stink. So you just ain't gonna take that shit out, let it air out, wash it out, and let your air, your ass breathe, none of that. I was like, okay, yeah. So me and Hami, I mean, we had slight little conversations during the night, but it was nothing because I really had nothing to say to her because the only thing I could think of my head was, you know, this bitch nasty. Now, man, you already had a situation when I was in Cook County Jail with the little Mexican lady rubbing her fucking hand across my fucking mouth. I was like, mommy, she done rubbed her hand across my mouth and I done had a fucking bum bump on my lip. I don't want another bum bum. You know, I don't want to be around nobody fucking nasty. I don't know what she got going on, you know? And I don't want people to think that I stink because she stink. You know, she musty as hell. So one of the things that I asked her um, while I was talking was like, damn, how long you been here? She said she had been there a month. You done been in jail a whole fucking money. You this motherfucking funky. You this fucking funky. Now, it ain't like they give you pennies. They give you pennies. She still got on a fucking blue thong. Did you at least change into the state panties? You still got my fucking blue thong. You know, the last thing I'm thinking about up in jail is a fucking blue thong. But you really, really a little itty bitty dyke with a blue thong on. This shit just blew my mind. So the next morning, which I thought about this shit all night. Like, man, I'm getting the fuck up out of this cell. The next morning when they popped those locks for us to go out for breakfast, I went up to the CO. Hey, excuse me, CO. Excuse me, CO. Finally, I got the CO attention. I'm standing at the CO desk. You know, you can't really go up to you because they to it because they tell you, you know, don't lean on the CO desk. Don't come up here unless you call and all this other shit. I tell the CO, I say, hey, can you switch my cell? Now, when I come out the cell to go holler at the CO, this itty bitty dyke, she goes over to the phone. She come out the cell and go to the phone. Bitch still got some thongs on, still got them socks on, still got that whole uniform on. You know, so I tell the CO, I say, hey, CO, can you switch my cell? So the CO, like, why? You know, and I don't want to be the one be like, because my, my celly stink. I don't want to say that, you know. But a CO do not want to switch your fucking cell unless there's a threat, an immediate threat, um, unless there's going to be a problem, because nobody wants to do fucking paperwork. Nobody wants to have to rearrange the, 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 the bedding schedule, none of this stuff. So the CO say, well, why you want your cell switched? So I'm like, damn, bitch, you better say something or, you know, they're going to turn your ass away. I was like, because my celly nasty. You know, she was like, yo, Sully nasty. I was like, yeah, my Sully stank. My Sully nasty. So, uh, unbeknownst to me, my Sully is standing right behind me. You know what I'm saying? So, she was like, fuck you talking about I ain't nasty. You know, but mind you, I'm five, nine and a half. And I'm damn, I'm 300 pounds. Fuck damn near. 
I'm 300 pounds. This bitch 4849. Between 90 and 95 pounds, I give. And bitch, you're getting loud with me. You're getting loud with me while we in this fucking common room and people can hear us and you trying to make me look like a bitch. So yes, the fuck you do stink. Your feet stink. You still got on the motherfucking thongs. You didn't wash your ass last night. Now I got to get on this with you. You know what I'm saying? Because what, what I won't be is a motherfucking punk to a little bitty dyke. What I won't be is a motherfucking punk to a little bitty dyke. Now let's get this shit. You know what I'm saying? So then I was like, bitch, you're nasty. I had to throw the bitch, you're nasty in there so the CEO can understand if you don't do something, potentially this could be a hazardous situation. You know? So the CEO, the CEO is contemplating what the fuck she gonna do and she's trying to get us to calm down and start raising our voices before it be a, a bigger issue. She's threatening to send us to the fucking hole. But old girl who I was looking at last night, I'm finna give her a name, Miss Allison. She comes up to the CO. She walks up there. She, excuse me, CO. Excuse me. Now, imagine, she done been there before me. So she, you know, she done sashayed her ass on past me. Cause I'm not up all fully up at the desk. She done got up there on the CO and say, CO, I'll take her. You know? So the CO said, You'll take She said, Yeah, she can move into my cell. Imagine, she's right next door to my cell. So the CO said, You comfortable with that? I'm, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. So, I boom, this is what I'm gonna do. Go back to my cell, grab all of my belongings. I'm gonna move the next door to Miss Allison's room. Miss Allison, she's right there while I'm moving my stuff in, but of course she should be right there. You know what I'm saying? She don't know me. You know, and your cell, if you done been in jail, your cell is your house. You know, you got all your personal stuff up in there, your paperwork, and you got all your shit up in there. Once again, this lady don't know me from a can of fucking paint. I could be a thief. I could be up in there stealing her shit. So she, you know, she up in there, she watching me while I put my stuff on, and we having um slight conversation. One of the, the one of the first things we talk about while we up in there, while I'm, you know, organizing, is is what is my charges. Which is respectable because you never want to be in a fucking cell cell with a fucking pedophile or chomo. Or what, let's call him a chomo. You know, you don't want to be up in there with nobody who touch on no fucking weirdo, nobody who touch on um um kids or motherfuckers who fuck on dogs. Cause can't say that's beneath it. Cause you got bitches up in there locked up for fucking dogs, all type of shit. So she want to know what's my malfunction. So I tell her, I don't got no weird shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm up in here for dry bank robbery. I'm up in here for, you know, fraud. I'm up in here for corrupt organization. She, huh? You know what I'm saying? But I don't think you understand <laughs> when I do that. Now, when I seen her the night before, she was normal, you know? But what I realized when I get in this room is when she talks, she, what you say? She, break, she breaks down. Huh? <laughs> you know some shit like that and it, it threw me off it threw me off bitch you was just normal out there you was just normal when we were standing at that motherfucking desk when I seen you sliding around to them tables and shit last night you was normal you wasn't doing the drop down dip you know so I'm like yeah I'm up in here for money you know I made such and such I'm, I'm telling them her my spill so she girl you lying you lying and all this other shit and I'm just like oh Oh, <laughs> you know, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I right, cool. The day go on. You know, we go back out into the common room. We done ate lunch and all this other shit. We done chill. We 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 act. We we like this that first day. You know. So that night when we get ready to go on the sale, she wants to play games. Now one of the one one of the games she wants to play is backgammon. I don't know shit about backgammon. You know, that's some shit I call a crackhead reindeer game. I don't know shit about backgammon. She wants to play it. So she grabbed the backgammon game before we came into the cell. Now, what she grabbed, she grabbed the, the, the board and the pieces. The bitch didn't bring the box. The reason she didn't bring the box is because she's going to teach me how to play backgammon. But she's going to teach me how to play backgammon only in her crackhead way. She's going to make up the rules as she go along. And she's going to change the rules when it benefits her. Pretty much she's fucking cheating me. You know, now, when I go out, I'm, I'm just going to throw this out here. When I go out into the common room to play backgammon, you know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to play with some other people who got some motherfucking sense. I'm, and I'm playing the way this bitch done taught me. They looking at me slow as fuck. Like, who the fuck taught you that? I miss Allison. Motherfuckers looking at me like, oh, so you listen to a crackhead now. Now, all the time when I'm telling Miss Allison my charges, I'm not understanding that this bitch is sizing me up. 
you know, she's sizing me up so she can sit there and really, really look down on me. You know, she's one of those. She wants to look down on me. The bitch tell me, you know, I'm a little bit older than you. So if you need some, because one of the things, wait, 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 before I tell you that, one of the things that we talked about, she asked me, you know, about my family. I'm like, my mom's dead. My, my father's gone or whatever. So she'll come back and say, you know, well, you know, I'm a little bit older than you. If you need some motherly advice, if you need some motherly advice. I'm here for you. I got. I can tell you everything you need to know. Bitch, I'm in my 30s. I don't need no motherfucking mother. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and what, what she failed to leave out is she a stone cold motherfucking crackhead. Now, when she started cheating me in that game, that first game, it left a bit of taste in my mouth for the simple fact I'm competitive. And I don't like being cheated. And I don't like nobody telling me one thing and then to benefit them, they change, they switch up the rules. I could catch on to that. That lets me know you're going to do whatever you got to do to get over in this life. You know what I'm saying? And that's the type of person she was. So every day it was something new. Every day it was something new. She out here. When I seen her walking around to those tables, it's because in the morning time she would go get her meds. She would cheek her meds. And in the afternoon time when she's walking around to those tables, she's trying to see who who's going to buy her pills off of her. You know, that's another thing. And here's another thing. Remember when I told, told you about the <laughs> all this shit right here? Check this out. I talk with my hands. You know what I'm saying? I talk with my hands. She's a person who talks with her body. But at 3 o'clock in the motherfucking morning, you don't got no fucking business transforming. Why would I sit up in my fucking bed here and shuffling and shit? You over there, <laughs> all this other shit. What the fuck is this? Bitch, leave that crack alone. Leave them drugs alone. You know, it makes a very uncomfortable situation. So every day, I guarantee you, every day was a little bit more tense. Every day was a little bit more tense. It started from me, st I stopped playing games with her, and I used to eat with her, but I stopped eating with her. When she sat on the left, I sat on the right. I didn't want to go nowhere with this chick. I didn't want to be involved with her, and I hated going into the cell. It started making me cringe. So when I go into the cell, I just get paper, go in the cell when I knew I had to be in there at night, and I still was going to be up so I could write a book. Start writing a book. And she want me to read my shit to her. Bitch, I don't want to read to you. I don't even want to talk to you no more. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you're weird to me. You're just a fucking weirdo. And I didn't even realize how, what type of situation I had got myself into. You know, another thing I didn't like was the bitch kept going up there getting fucking medical slips. And, um, law slips. Um, law slips. So she can write. Listen, every, she used to hold her hand like this when she's doing all this shit. All the time. I asked her when I first get in there, like, what's wrong with your hand? She had a little knot, like, on her hand. Now, to an untrained eye, it looked like a cyst or whatever. So she tell me that she worked in the staff kitchen and that a piece of metal uh, from a spatula or some shit shot into her hand. Now, what she didn't tell me that another motherfucker told me was she was in a crack house getting high and a motherfucking crack pipe bust and a glass went in her fucking hand. So every day she's she's sitting up there, she's writing and dropping slips to the people in the in the um infirmary saying that she need help and she don't this piece of glass is traveling up to her heart, it's gonna be in her lungs soon. I'm talking about talking about all this shit. When nobody answers her ass, she wants to write these letters to Wilkinson Bird, one the fuck she wanna write them to, and then the bitch gonna here's what turn me really off. The bitch gonna say is do you mind if I put your name on the paperwork and say you was a witness? Bitch, yes, I'm mad. What you're not gonna do is sit up there and put your, my fucking name on your paperwork saying I was there when a the fucking crack pipe bust in your motherfucking hand and a glass went up in there. What you're not gonna do, I wasn't there. You know, what you're not gonna do is say I was a witness to them not giving you medical fucking treatment because you lied. You know what I'm saying? Because you lied. First of all, ma'am, I wasn't even in jail when this shit was happening. You know, don't put my name on shit. Then I was calling home one day to check on my children. You know what I'm saying? This bitch comes over there to the phone where I was and say, Hey, baby, hey, baby, girl. And I'm like, Miss Allison, what's up? I need you to do me a favor. What the fuck you mean? What favor, Miss Allison? What you need? I need you to ask your daughter, you know, <coughs> to get in contact with whatever fucking news station it was out there in Pittsburgh. To get in contact with them and tell, uh, what the fuck was this dude's name? He was supposed to be exposing cases in jail or some shit to tell them that you know you got a case. I don't got no motherfucking case and I'm not getting my daughter involved in this shit. 
You know? And then, listen, my last fucking straw with this lady, and I gotta be honest, my last, now mind you, we, we, we have intention in this fucking, uh, in this cell. And I mean, it's tension. I'm not saying anything to her because I don't want to be in a cell with her. So I just keep writing. My last straw with this fucking lady was we was on lockdown. So she she got a raise, as you know, she had got a raise earlier that day. And she wanted to decide that she wanted to become a barber up in the fucking cell. Now imagine, we ain't got no brooms. We ain't got no brooms. And I told you she had nice little hair, a nice amount of hair. This bitch took that razor. And went around the side of her motherfucking head. All the way around the side of her head. And cut her shit scoop ball. She cut her shit scoop ball. And it was hair all over that motherfucking cell. I, I, I want to shit bricks. I want to shit bricks. Because when I got up to use the toilet. And sat on the motherfucking toilet. This bitch hair was stuck to my ass. I want to beat her the fuck up. But I didn't. <laughs> I really wanted to. I just got up and told the CEO the next day, yo, I don't care what you got going on, but y'all got to get me the fuck up out of here. Y'all got to really get me the fuck up out of here. You know, and then her mouth was smart. But the last thing that happened, you know, they ended up changing my cell. You know, and when they changed my cell, I really had nothing to say to her. I didn't have to talk to her no more. But somebody else didn't like her ass either, you know, and she ended up getting into a fight. And when she got into that fight, because normally she just talks shit and sit up on these this, this stack of chairs like she's um, queen of the throne. She's a queen on her throne. But whatever girl, she got into it with a, another crackhead. And this crackhead whooped her ass to the point she knocked her fucking tooth out. <laughs> and with that being said, I'm done.